Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about finding the intervals of concavity and the inflection points for this rational function. Uh, the first thing that we need to look at for the function is that it has a x squared plus 4 in the denominator. So as you can see that this can not be 0, so we are going to consider the domain of um, all real numbers for this function. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, to find intervals of concavity, we should first find the first and the second derivatives. Okay, so first derivative f prime is that we are going to use the quotient rule. So we are going to start by writing down, okay, so the fraction line, and then now um, copy down the bottom function, so x squared plus 4 and then times the derivative of the top function, so which is what? It's 2x, and then the negative 4 becomes 0. So we just get the 2x here, and then now minus, minus now copy down the top function, so x squared minus 4. And then now take the derivative of the bottom function, which is also just 2x, so we just get that. And then now we square the denominator. Okay, so that's our first derivative. Now we need to simplify this. To simplify this, all we need to do is to simply just multi rating out because we are still going to take the second derivative. So if we don't simplify, then it will be more difficult for us to find the second derivative. So distribute the 2x to the x squared plus 4. Uh, yeah, so we get what? 2x cubed and then plus 8x. And then now this one also distribute the 2x to the x squared minus 4. So we are going to get what? Uh, negative because of the negative sign here, negative 2x times x squared, so we get negative 2x cubed. And then there was a negative sign here, negative sign here, so they cancel out, so we are going to get positive, so positive 8x, so plus 8x here. And then what happens is that the denominator stays the same, you should not need to multiply writing out in the denominator, so just leave it. Now as you can see, if we simplify this, we can combine like terms and the 2x cubed and then minus 2x cubed, they will get canceled. So uh, we can also combine the ax, right? So we are going to just get 16x, okay? And then what do we get here? We get x squared plus 4 and then quantity squared in the denominator. So that is our first derivative. And then um, get the second derivative, which is just to take the derivative of the first derivative. So we are going to use the quotient rule again. Okay, so now we are going to copy down the bottom function. So we are going to get x squared and then plus 4 and quantity squared and then times the derivative of the top, which would be simply just 16. Okay, and then now minus, minus now copy the top function, so 16x, and then now take the derivative of the bottom function. So we are going to get, bring down the two, we gotta use the general power rule and then also the chain rule. So two times x squared and then plus four. And then times what? Times two x, times the derivative of the inner function. So times the two x. And then what about the denominator? The denominator stays the same. So, well, actually not staying the same. Um, we still got to square the denominator, right? So this part is the same, but we are going to get the fourth power here. Now, um, usually just like what we did with the f prime, we got to simplify the numerator. But before doing that, you can see that there was the x squared plus four to the second power. And then there is another factor, the x squared plus four. There is also x squared plus four to the fourth power right here. So you can see that every turn in the fraction has a factor x squared plus four. So we got to cancel them first. And then now, of course, uh, instead of factoring out the x squared plus four, you can actually just, just cross out one factor of each. But now I'm going to show the what here, I'm going to factor out the x squared from each turn in, at the top, and then we can do the cancellation. So we are going to get Okay, so what do we do? We factor the x squared plus 4 first. Okay, so we get x squared plus 4. Okay, then now, now the stuff that's left is that we have the 16, and then we also factor out one copy of this x squared plus 4, right? So we are going to be left with 16, and then x squared plus 4. And you can see that now if we multiply this back in, we are going to get the square. And then minus, there is a minus sign here, and then now multiply all the other stuff first. So 2x and then 2 and then 16. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 16 is 64. So we get 64. And then there was the x and x here, we get x squared. 
What about this x squared plus 4? We factor it out already, so we do not have any more factors of x squared plus 4. So now this is the expression inside the brackets. And so what about the denominator? Same thing, right? So just copy. Okay, so this time right now, we are going to do the cancellation. So here we have, um, we can cancel out one factor, and then now we get a third power for this. Okay, and then of course, we get to simplify this part right here. So continue. So we are going to get 16x squared uh, plus 64, and then minus 64x squared. Then denominator, so x squared plus 4 to the third power. And then continue with the simplifying. So 16x squared minus 64x squared, we are going to get what? Negative 48x squared, and then plus 64. And then what about the denominators? Just keep copying. Okay. So here um, we can factor out negative 16. So it's up to you whether you want to do that. So uh, if usually we try to factor as much as possible. So we factor out negative 16 from both terms right here. So we are going to get x squared and then minus because we're factoring out a negative number. So we get, we change the sign to from positive to negative. So we get minus. And then what do we get here? We get, um, oh, actually I'm missing something, right? If I factor the negative 16, I should get three x squared here and then minus, minus, we factor out the uh, 16, negative 16 from the 64, so we are going to get minus 4. And then denominator stays the same, so just keep copying. Okay, so now this part is mm, fully simplified. Of course, if you want to continue to factor this one, you can also do that. That's the difference of two squares, but um, I will just leave it like this, okay? So this is our second derivative. And what happens next is that we are going to find, use the second derivative function, find the potential inflection points. And what we do, okay, is that we are going to set the, this equal to zero or try to find any x values that, uh, that when f double prime does not exist. In that case, um, that is, we don't have such x values. The only, possible x values is when this fraction is equal to zero. So um, to find the potential inflection points, okay, it, which is to just set the f double prime equal to zero, which will give us what? Actually, this denominator cannot be zero and then the negative 16 cannot be zero. So the only thing that can be zero is this expression right here. So we get three x squared minus four is equal to zero here. And then now we just need to solve this equation to find those x values of the uh, potential inflection points. So we get what three x squared is equal to four. So we just keep, keep going. So we get uh, x squared isolating the x squared. So we get four over three and then now we can find this. So x is equal to what? Taking the square root on both sides. So we take the square root on both sides, the plus or minus. Okay, so what do we get here? We are going to get plus or minus and then square root of four, we get two. Square root of three, just square root of three. So now you have the two x values right here. Now, when you have the two x values, we are going to uh, put them on the lumber line because we cannot really be sure that those are the x values for the, the inflection points yet because for the inflection points, there must be a change of concavity at that point, right? So before that, we need to find intervals of concavity first. So now we need to look at the lumber line. This is the x-axis, okay? We plot those two x values on the lumber line. So the smaller one is the negative value, so negative two over radical three, and then the other one is positive two over radical three. Okay, so we have three subintervals for the lumber line, okay? And then we just need to test points using the second derivative. So this is our second derivative over here. So this is the second derivative. We get to use this one, okay? And then what happens is that we get to pick something. So what is something that we can pick here? This is a negative number that's a positive number. So the easiest one to pick would be zero, okay? Um, so we pick zero. And then now just one thing to keep in mind is that the domain for the function, so we cannot pick something that is not in the domain. So now we already know that for the original function, the domain is always number, so we can pick any number that we want except for the 
for the uh, those endpoints for the subintervals. So now pick zero and then plug it back into the second derivative, which would give us what? Now let's take a look. So we get negative for this one, negative 16. And then plug in zero here. So we get zero minus four. And then in the denominator, what do we get here? We plug in zero, so we get zero squared plus four, and then to the third power. Now, do you see that this is a negative number? That is a negative number. The bottom is always positive, so we don't actually need to worry about the bottom. We only need to worry about the numerator. So negative times negative is positive, so we get a positive here. So that means this is concave up. <clears throat> this is the interval of concave up, so the function is concave up on this interval between negative 2 over radical 3 and 2 over radical 3. Now let's do the other one. Okay, so pick something right here. It's up to you what you want to pick here. Uh, if you're not sure about this number, you can simply just pick, um, just use a calculator and then uh, compute this, turn it into a decimal, then you can pick. But we know that this is not going to be uh, a big number. So let's just pick 1000, right? We, we can tell that 1000 is on the right side of this number, so plug the 1000 in here. Now we're getting plugging the 1000, we don't actually have to do the calculation, we only need to worry about the signs. The first number here, negative 16, is negative. And then what about this one? Plug in 1000 here, you score it, it becomes a positive big number, and then subtract the 4, that is going to be positive. The Denominator, as I said before, it's always going to be positive. So it, it positive, positive. There is a negative sign right here. So we know that that's going to be negative. So this is the interval of concave down. So we have this. And then same thing actually happens for this side right here. Because when we plug in the negative 1000, uh, we are going to square it. So this would still be a positive number. So the signs would still just look like this. And we are still going to get a negative number here, so the function is concave down, okay? And then now what happens? <clears throat> and so you can see that there is a change of concavity at this x value right here, same thing right here, because it changes from concave down to concave up at this x value and then it changes from concave up to concave down at this value. So now what happens? What happens is that those are the two spots where we have the inflection points. And so uh, to get the points, we actually need to plug those x values back into the original functions to find the y value so that we can get the order pair. So now we are, uh, we are left with finding the inflection points. So first, we need to write down the intervals, so concave up, it's between those two values, so we get negative 2 over radical 3, and then 2, 2 over radical 3, okay? And then what about concave down? Concave down, we have two sub-intervals, so for this one, this one is from negative infinity to negative 2 over radical 3. And the other one, the other one is what? The other one is from 2 over radical 3 to infinity. And we're just listing the intervals right here, so we are using commas to separate them. So uh, those are the intervals for um, the curve being concave down. And so now we get the intervals of concavity. The only thing that's left is to find a y values for the inflection points. So uh, first thing we need to find, we need to find um, f of two over radical three. In fact, you can actually plug in both points at the same time. The reason is really just that because we are plugging in the x value and we have a square on those x values. So what happens is that whether we plug in a positive or a negative, we are still going to get the same thing. So if you want, you can actually plug in both at the same time. And then what do we get here? So square. And then we have minus 4. and then square, and then plus four. And as you can see, we can plug in that value in here. So uh, plus or minus two over radical three, and then plus or minus two over radical three, and then do the calculation. So um, when you square, whether it's plus or minus, we are still gonna get the same value. So we, are, we only need to worry about squaring the two over radical three, which is four over three. So four over three minus four. And then this one, 4 over 3 plus 4. 
And to simplify this, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 3. So we get 4 minus, multiply this by 3, we get 12. And then, multiply this by 3, we get 4. Plus, multiply this by 3, we get 12. So we are going to get, what? what is this one? This one is negative 8. And what, what about this one? This one is 16. So we get negative 1 over 2 as the y value. So uh, the inflection points, okay? What are the inflection points? These are all the pairs, not intervals, okay? So we have the x value, which is 2 over radical 3. And then the y value is negative 1 over 2. That is our first point, okay? Not an interval, even though they look quite similar to each other right and the other one the other one is what the other one is negative 2 over radical 3 and then same y value so negative 1 over 2 so now those are the two inflection points that we have and those are the three intervals um, of the concavity okay so those are our final answer so that's it for this problem if you like this video please subscribe and then also give me a like thank you i will see you next time